الحمد لله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على من كان نبي وآل وبين الماء والطين وعلى آله وعلى أصحابه أجمعين أما بعد فأعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وصلوا تسليما وعلى آل سيدنا ومولانا محمد وبارك وسلم وصلي عليه ولما يكرم Brothers, sisters, elders, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Title, <coughs> Locked, Won't Let Me Out. Now who is locked and who wants to come out? First, there are certain people who are going to answer this question by saying we are referring that shaitan is locked and he wants to come out. But the reality which I see and which you see is that the shaitan isn't locked anymore and the shaitan is walking when we're walking. And I have noticed, and you have too, that people the real shaitan is locked, but he still has his people who are helping him. <clears throat> and there are certain people who will say the shaitan is locked and he wants to come out, but you would see that the people are dressing in a manner, speaking in a manner, which you think that is not a manner of a Muslim at all. Nor is it the manner which Prophet Wasallam has taught us, nor the manner which the ulama has taught us. So where have we perceived such manner and obtained such manner that even in Ramadan, I have physically seen people smoking, I have seen people who already Khatm al-Quran happened yesterday, and have purchased new clothes, have already hired a car, and then we have to win the road of Manchester on his day. <laughs> Reality. A lot of people that I've heard the Kufas here, and Sheikhs up here, who have given us a nasiha by saying we should do this, we should do that. We should. But before we could improve on betterment, we need to acknowledge our personal weaknesses and mistakes. You cannot better yourself when the mistakes are unidentified. I was still studying in Damascus and I came for my summer holidays. And I was lecturing in uh, Fair Park Mosque. And after the lecture, and all this terminology, this hip-hop mentality which people have developed today, I missed it and I was studying, I came back and after the talk, after an hour long speech, uh, a teenager came to me and he said, he said, yo Sheikh, you were sick. <laughs> and I looked at this guy and I, I looked at myself and I thought, I feel healthy, <laughs> I look healthy and what is he talking about? I'm, I'm sick. <laughs> so I said to him, you know, I'm, I'm fine. I was look, I'm fine. And he said, no, 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 you are sick. <laughs> and I thought to myself, and I said, there's something missing. You see that I'm not understanding what he's saying, or I am looking weak. So I made an excuse and I said, no, no, I'm really down fine. And, you know, then change your weather and so forth and I might be feeling it down. And he says, no, no, sick means good. So I said, what does good mean? And he said, wicked. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought to myself, 
A Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is a person who has been sending this hadith and saying spread Islam, spread salam, give each other blessings, give, give each other that may Allah protection and blessing be upon you and we have moved to sick, wicked and God knows what. <laughs> this is the mentality. Where have you obtained this? Are these the teachings of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? Are these the teaching what the ulama have taught you? Or are these the terminologies and manners which you have obtained from somewhere else? Now, there are certain people here who once hearing this, they try to work with that individual and gives him and shows him the way and the ahadith of Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the shayukh, the ulama are teaching. But there are certain people who receive their knowledge from internet. And with internet, there are certain vices and there are certain knowledge or aspects of knowledge which can destroy one. So once you are searching for knowledge, Make sure you go to the right places in front of the right scholars and obtain the right knowledge. And this knowledge will help you combat and give you a sense of unity as well as gives you a personality. So you don't have to search in this gangster hip hop mentality where I don't know about Rodham but in Sheffield you normally see teenagers they've got their trousers fairly low they've got a little bop in their walk and they've got a can of red bull in their hand <laughs> and they're walking down the street some are stood around the street and everybody's there and this is the mentality nowadays we can't hold any other beverage so we hold red bull Time of Tarawih comes, people, and I have actually seen people walking into Tarawih, coming out with the tasbih in the month of Ramadan, Eid comes, everything vanishes. Why? It's because we are weak in our understanding, and it is understanding which is fulfilled by knowledge. So knowledge is important. Now everybody is here talking about shaitan, shaitan is this, shaitan is that. Uh, there was a now knowledge is, is a blessing. There was a in Punjab in Gujarat. I met a person and he named his son Iblis. So I said to him and I said, Why have you named your son Iblis? He said, Well, I opened the Quran and I wanted a name that nobody else has. So I read whole of the Quran and I looked in my area, nobody named that kid Iblis, so I thought I'll be my Iblis. Now this is the mentality. That person who has no knowledge will make stupid errors which can destroy one another. So you need the correct knowledge, seek it from the ulama haq ahl sunnah because half of the problems here shaitan works with ulama and if you want to know which ulama are bad you don't have to go far just go past Jeddah into Makkah and you meet some <laughs> and if you want to meet him here you meet him here they are the agents of shayateen and they will give you knowledge which will destroy you so when I say seek knowledge, I want you to seek knowledge from the correct ulama of Ahl Sunnah wal Jama'ah. I'm not here to tell you that everybody that wears a turban and has a beard is the righteous person you go after him. There are still shayateen walking among us who are known as scholars, but really they are destroying you and they will destroy your generation. So keep away from such ulama. The only ulama that could give you 
Jannah and the only ulama that could give you the real teaching of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam are the ulama ahl sunnah wal jamaa and the rest the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam said they are all entering heaven. Allah. So when you seek knowledge, go to the right scholars. Now who is Shaitan? Shaitan comes from a word in Arabic as Shatata. What does Shatata mean? Shaitan is an ideology. His real name is Iblis. Wait, Shaitan is an ideology. What is the ideology? It's in his name. And that is Shatata. Shatata means creating distance between the two. This is the ideology. Creating distance is the act of shaitan is embedded in his name. Now what is, why is he known as shaitan? Because his ideology, his work is to create distance between you and your creator. So for creating this distance between you and your creator is known as shaitan. And this is why in the Quran you will read that there are shaitan among mankind as well as jinn. So you'll say there's only one shaitan and then he's Iblis, then why can we see shaitan from mankind as well as jinn? The real reason here is that the shaitan is an ideology. Shaitan is an ideology. We say that in our day-to-day -day life, when we see somebody mocking somebody or messing around, we'll say, oh, banda ban shaitan da puttar na ban. Why do we say this? Because he is following what shaitan is doing. In other words, creating distance between two. When, when we see each other, when I meet somebody and he's going off to masjid to play maghrib. And I ask him, I said, brother, where are you going? He says, I'm going to the masjid to play maghrib. I said, no, no, we better go somewhere. And then we both go to the masjid and we play maghrib together. And once we leave, Isha's happened, Fajr's happened, and a week later we remember that oh, we had to go and read Maghrib. This distance that's created between the Lord and that person is in work of a shaitan. But here you have another great enemy, and that enemy is your nafs. <coughs> now what's the difference between shaitan and your nafs? Shaitan whispers once and then he leaves. Your nafs, your personal desire, they keep whispering until you do not act as your nafs wants you. And this is why the Sufiya, the Ahl Safa, the people of purity who work on their heart, they fight their nafs. And they keep fighting their nafs. If the naf says we need a bird, he makes you walk. The Sufis make you walk. And if the if the nafs wants meat to eat, the Sufi will say, Well, we're keeping a fast today. This is the act of a Sufi. He works against his nafs. Shaitan gives you a message, and nafs repeats that message. So it is your nafs that accepts the whispers of shaitan and we need to block and create a barrier between our heart and the nafs so that the, the messages of shayateen aren't entering our heart and then we are still connected with our Lord. Now how do we obtain this connection? We obtain this connection through love. The only way to connect with somebody is through love. And Imam Ghazali has written, because everybody has their own interpretation of love. And if I was to ask somebody what is love, he wouldn't know. Imam Ghazali has written a definition of love which I like. And he says love is a natural inclination towards something that gives you pleasure. Something which gives you pleasure 
and it is a natural form of inclination. You're not forced to go into that path. And here he says your natural inclination which gives you pleasure is Allah's pleasure. That is your natural inclination. Why? Because once you are ever in hardship, the first thing you call out for is Allah. That is your natural inclination. And then he gave an example. An example of Sayyidina Yusuf and Zulayha. And here, <clears throat> Zulaikha loved the Prophet, the Prophet Yusuf وسلم, that she says, لو رفعت رأسي إلى السماء رأيت اسم يوسف مكتوبا في القوام that if I was ever to lift and raise my head and I loved Yusuf to this extent that if I looked in the sky I saw his name written in the stars I saw his name written in the stars this is Zulaikha's love and we, at the very time, who say, Bilal al Nabi, we ask your Rasul, Prophet وسلم, has forbidden us to do something because we're surrounded by such evil, we will commit that act and then come back tomorrow in the masjid and say, Wallah, we still ask your Rasul. It's these weaknesses you need to address. I'm not here to say that you can't have fun at all. Because if I was to do that, then I'm telling a lie. Because there are certain ahadiths which indicate that you have to live in a fashion that your rule is content. And contentment comes in different levels. Starting level, and I see a lot of youngsters here, and if I say, Shaitan is this, you can't do this, you can't do this, and he's going to say, Shaitan is this, Then you must tell us not to live. If you're going to tell us not to do this, not to do that, not to do this, not to do this, then what should we do? Sit at home and not go to school because Fitna is there. Contentment comes in different levels. So when I'm addressing, I'm addressing people on different levels. These young children here are masoom. So we have to address them as such. The teenagers, have different problems, we need to address those problems. The elders have different problems, you need to address each problem differently. Weaknesses and problems need to be addressed separately. You cannot talk to an eight-year-old child either you're talking to a person who's at the age of 40. So you have to be aware of your personal problems. And here, and I'm telling you, the only thing that will save you from shaitan, whichever level you are, whether you are a beginner, whether you are an intermediate, whether you are an advanced, the only thing that will change you is the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of Prophet That is the only thing that's going to save you is the love of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So there are certain ulama now that say, oh, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is dead, but what you need to do is go straight direct to Allah, and I say to you that who gave you the message of Allah is Prophet Muhammad. You need to knock on the doors of Prophet Muhammad before you can go to the doors of Allah. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. You have to go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So those people who say you can't go to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is gone, you need to go away from that guy. Why? You have to knock on his door before he purifies you and then he takes you to Allah. That is his job. He's a messenger. He cleans your heart. And once you think you're worthy, then he says, go into the presence of Allah. This is the act of a prophet. Now, once you love somebody, once you love... <coughs> So you need to tell me when food is being served. That's the only thing that's messed up. Now, you have to understand here, I'm, I'm going through all this topic. I'm basically, the, in Quran, now 
Sadaka Sad here has conned me into giving me half an hour and he's giving me a topic that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has in every other verse said beware of shaitan, beware of shaitan. God knows how many times shaitan has come in the Quran and he says you have half an hour to tackle shaitan. <laughs> yani 6,000 over verses about shaitan, tackling shaitan and he's giving me half an hour to tackle shaitan. Now, so I'm going to go in a fairly pacey manner. So I want people to have these bullet points and then you could convey the rest of the message in the language you know best. Whether that is wicked, whether whichever it is, whether we're going to bang shaitan now, whatever you're going to use, but you use the language to portray your message the way. Because what we have to do is there is an ideology that if you feed a person once, he'll be hungry tomorrow. But if you teach him how to fend for himself, then he'll never go hungry. This is the thing. Whether we stand here and give lectures, you'll need us tomorrow. But if we teach you something, then you could do our work in our absence. So this is what we need to do. We need to teach. And once you love somebody, now we're talking about love with Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So I don't want any editing on the internet by saying he says you know go and love some people. <laughs> so love of Allah and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And once you have love with somebody, it says that you take heed to his kalam and leave everybody else's kalam. If I love. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Or I'll give you an example of today. My love for Sadaqah is immense. Subhanallah. Now, if I'm true in my love with Sadaqah, what will happen that his wording and his kalam will be so dear to me that no other kalam can ever enter my ears? This is a common thing. Whoever you love. You like his kalam. You like his speech. So my speech that will enter my ears will be the person who I love. And we are claiming to love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So the only kalam we should enter in our ears and we should take heed is the kalam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Why? Because we're showing our love to him. Otherwise, if we like his kalam, his kalam, his kalam, then we're not true to anybody. And this is a common, common aspect of when you love somebody, and you see this, when two people are in love, you see that the third person is a matter. Zulaikha, she used to see the name of Prophet uh, Yusuf written in the stars, and third person did a matter. But here today we love Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam to this extent that if a fourth person ever is to say something, we say yes, you're right. We don't think that it's only the kalam of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that should be dear to us. That's your first, first step. Now, which is the second step? That the muchness of your loved one is far dear to you than the any other majlis. So wherever the person who you love is seated, you want to be there. Now if I give my example of Sheikh again, if my love is here and he's in Rotherham and I'm sat in Sheffield and we don't meet every year or even on a telephone call, then my love isn't true. No matter how much I say, you know, I love you, I love you. Why? Because his majlis his sitting, his place of seating should be more dear to me than anyone else. This is why when somebody speaks against the very grave of Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, each and every Sunni speaks out because we love our Prophet that his seating place is far dear to us than any other place at all. This is the second step. And the third one, is that your rida, your pleasure is with the pleasure the one you love. Nothing else matters. 
If your loved one wants to live in a certain manner, you will live in a certain manner. If your loved one doesn't want this, you don't want that. So if your love for Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam is such that if he stops and forbids you from a aspect of life, you don't go near there. And if he says this is the way, you follow that way. These are the three things you should follow when you love somebody. Now how do you get these three things? First thing is about his kalam is through knowledge. Is through knowledge. The second one about his sitting is through sohba, association. You associate yourself with the company, the companionship you have reflects your personality. And the third one is sabr. You will be tested, shaitan will test you, Allah will test you. And in order to be true, you have to have sabr. And that is the only way for now, Ramadan is finishing, people are ready to enjoy Eid. Now, Sayyidina Abu Bakr here, on a day when Eid happened, he started to weep, he started to cry. The Sahaba said it is a day where we will feast and it is a day when we will enjoy ourselves and you are weeping. And he says, I don't know whether I have asked for my forgiveness in this month. And have I really done or have I justified and done justice to this month? And you are the judge of yourselves. If you have justified and have worshipped the way you should have and trustworthy worship in Ramadan, then I give you the glad tidings that your forgiveness is accepted through the teachings of Prophet Muhammad <coughs> And if you have fallen short, you pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We all pray that may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive our shortcomings. And may He give us the understanding of Ramadan. May He give us the real pleasure, which is the pleasure of Him. And the pleasure which we find in our clothes, in our house, in our cars, is the pleasure of this world. And the pleasure of hereafter is the real pleasure, and for that we will seek certain hardship. And that hardship will fall on people's shoulders. And how will you, how will you hear, how will you seek repentance is through suffering. The only way, the only way, if I was to give a book to a child and say, go study this, if we were such great students, we would have done something in school and colleges. If we were so brilliant and excelling in our education, Sahaba conquered Spain and we've already given Spain away. We can't even defend our own boundaries. We can't even defend our own house. People are in the mind of our child. The only way you could help yourself is through Sohba Ulama. Sit with them, speak to them, seek knowledge from them and they will tell you how to live your life. Because they will teach you how Prophet Muhammad lived and his life, you see from the time he woke up to the time he went to sleep, was the life he lived was according to the Quran. So on this account, People need to take heed, people need to learn knowledge, have the right companionship with the ulama, and on that account, may Allah accept our fasts, may Allah accept our worship, may Allah accept me coming here, you listening, and may we have the tawfiq 
to act upon what has been said here, alhamdulillah. 